ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, the long evaded, awaited, a long evaded, the long awaited event has occurred. I finally got rain. I've been waiting for some rain and I just didn't know what to do. I saw all the men out there dancing and, you know, doing things in circles and everything and they were trying to make it rain and it didn't work. And then it finally rained. I needed the rain. Why? Because, as I told you, I had 96 bags of cement that over the past four months, I have emptied out all of those bags of cement. A lot of work because those things are 90 pounds each. No kidding. And with those 90 pound bags of cement, and it taking me so long because I just don't have the energy anymore. Let me see if I can explain. Muscular dystrophy affects the muscles, mostly, um, definitely, usually the legs. That's why most people with muscular dystrophy end up in wheelchairs first. Okay. Well, what's happening is my right leg, the muscle in the calf, um, there is definitely a problem with that. And I'm going to go to a one of those um, witch doc, I mean, uh, medical doctors. And yeah, you heard me. Anyway, I got to go to one of those witch doctors to have them do uh, an x-ray on that muscle. And they're going to give me a hard time because you know how insurance companies don't want to do MRIs, even though MRIs now are a lot cheaper. They weren't cheap at first when MRIs were first invented and people were, you know, doing it in the late 80s. Okay, yeah, yeah, I remember the technology, magnetic resonance imaging. Yes, I remember the technology, but I'm going to need an MRI because it is the muscle and it's also in the bone. And I've been noticing it for about a month now and it should not be that. It I should not be tender in that part of my leg. And also that's what's causing some cramping in the toes. And when I say cramping in the toes, well, just let's see if you could experience your toes locking up and the pain that comes with something like that. So that's what I've been experiencing lately. Uh -uh. I don't want your remedies. Keep your remedies to yourself. Your remedies don't work for me. Well, if you take some Samoclamagen, man, you everything, you'll be great, and you'll be doing what the scriptures say. You'll be living forever. Okay. All of your remedies work for you. They won't work for me. You have no clue as to what is wrong with me. I am the only one who has a clue as to what is wrong with me. Oh, no. Uh -uh. You hold on now. I know exactly what's wrong with you. You see, if you weren't so... No, 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 no. You're going to hear me out because you're going to talk about nobody knowing what's wrong with you. Please, man, it's obvious what's wrong with you. How dare you sit up here and tell us we don't know what's wrong. <laughs> man, you got some issues, okay? Sitting up here talking to them people in your house. You know ain't nobody else in your house, but you're sitting up there acting like they living with you. What's wrong with you? Ain't nobody else doing nothing like that. But you're going to sit up there and do that. What you mean ain't got nothing to do with your health? Yeah, that's your mental health, you ignorant mother. Wait, hold on. How, what you going to check? You good with that? No, don't you shut that door. Man. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Keith Sweat was singing to that, that moron, telling them they don't want to go outside in the rain. Well, they outside in the rain now. Shoot. All right, let's get back to this. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I'm showing you this is because the God I serve, well, his name is Jehovah, and you know what? He loves justice, and he will not abandon his loyal ones. See, that's why I love the God that I serve, okay? He ain't like Barney. No, no, he loves me. Not loved it, but loves me. Now, hold on now. Some of y'all think serving Jehovah is religion. No, man created religion. No, let me let me say it again. Man created religion. Jehovah didn't create religion. Go ahead and take a look. Go ahead and take a look. What religion did he ever create? Christians? No. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Christian means Christ-like follower. Well, Jesus is God. We ain't even going to have that discussion because I already done told y'all 
if Jesus was God, God cannot die. Jesus died. Sorry, there ain't nothing you can say. You can't get around that. You can't even get over that, under that. You can't even go through that one. There is no explanation. It doesn't matter how much faith you got. Ladies and gentlemen, a fact is a fact. You know what the problem? Before I get into my discussion that I really wanted to have with you guys, we're at a point in time in men's history where television and the so-called wannabe evolutionists have gotten everybody to doubt. Look at our world. Look at how backwards the world is because everybody is coming up with their own ideas for who Jehovah is instead of going according to what he says he is and who he says he is and what he says he's capable of. See, the God I serve, this is what he says. The righteous, the people who do what's right. Spike Lee, where you at? I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I, I heard him calling my name. The righteous will possess the earth and they will live forever on it. Well, that's the promise he makes to me. Everybody else, all these other religions, well, they want to go to heaven. Yeah, they want to go to heaven, but he says, on the earth, forever. That's what everlasting life is. You see, it says life, living life forever. No, wait, 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 wait. I got something I want to show you. That's why, that's why I'll take you here. I took you here because I want to show you this. Only one more. It's only necessary to show you one more. We can go to Isaiah. I, you mean Isaiah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I saw the movie, something for Isaiah. No, it is Isaiah. It's a Hebrew name. Okay? Isaiah. But it's pronounced in English. Yes, but it is still pronounced Isaiah. Okay, we're going to go to 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Or is it 22nd chapter? I I'm sorry, it's 22nd. It's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, I think it's Isaiah, it's the 40th chapter. I don't know. It's been a while. Okay. It, oh, wait a minute. How did I get all the way to 23? Nope. It's the 40th chapter. I, I was wrong, ladies and gentlemen. 40 verse 22. 4-0. Now, why, is, why, why do people go by this book? What, what, what's so good about the Bible? Well, first of all, the Bible isn't just a book. What do you mean the Bible isn't just a book? I didn't see it. It's right there. It says book. Some people call it the good book. No, 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 no. The word Bible means many books. The Bible is literally a volume of books. 66 books combined into one book. Just go ahead and look up the definition of the word Bible. You'll see it means many books. Many books. So it is 66 books or letters put into one volume, i.e., that's called the Bible. Do you need to believe in the Bible? No. The Bible doesn't require belief. That's not even a prerequisite. The Bible requires understanding. Don't believe me. That's not, that's not my fault. But this is what I want to show you about the promise he makes. I need to make this larger, so give me a second. Not, 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 not because I can't see it, but because I need to make it larger. Is that all right with you? We're going to bring that up to 18, okay? There you go. Whew. It's a whole lot better. Now I ain't got a strain. There is one who dwells. That's right, lives. Above the circle of the earth, you're going to start saying you dwell. That's my place of dwelling and not my place of inhabitants. Anyway, there is one who dwells above the surface circle of the earth. This is written in 700 BCE, roughly. So it already called the earth a circle. For those who claim the Bible says the earth is flat, you cannot be flat and be a circle at the... Well, you can be a flat surface in a circle. No, it's not saying that. See, this one is going to say sphere, S-P-H-E-R-E, -E, because this was originally written in Hebrew. Not that current Hebrew stuff that people speak today. No, 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 no. This ain't that Hebrew. This ain't your mama's Hebrew. 
This is the ancient Hebrew. Okay? But anyway, there is one who dwells above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. You ever see people talk about being so high up that they look at the creatures and they, they look very small? Well, that's, they could have just stood on top of a mountain and looked down at the people. No. Let's go on. He is stretching out the heavens like a fine gauze. Before science proved it, that the universe was flat. See, not the earth. The universe is flat. It's a very thin layer. That's hard to imagine, the universe being flat. Look at all that's inside of it. I know, but it is flat. Scientists have proven that the universe is flat, like a blanket or a gauze. And it says, and he spreads them out. The universe is expanding or spreading out like a tent. What does a tent do? Well, it protects individuals to dwell in. It says he's spreading out the heavens like a tent to dwell in. It doesn't say that he's spreading out the earth like a tent to dwell in, even though it's talking about he sits above the circle of the earth. See the God I serve? He promised individuals forever. He said that individuals will live forever. You this is not living forever just on the earth, ladies and gentlemen. Eventually, they will get to expand to these heavens because he created it for them to dwell in. Don't worry about it. I know I know you ain't never been taught that. All you got to do is read the scriptures for what they say, not for what I say they say. Go back and read it. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. And he stretches out the heavens. Remember, he's talking about the earth. He's talking about, have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? This was his plan. It's just, you know, the, the, those two creatures that nobody believes in anymore, Adam and Eve. Because nobody believes that everything had to have a start. Everything had to have a beginning. Well, God didn't have no beginning. Wait a minute. What if his beginning was something we couldn't understand? Hold on, what are you talking about? What if his beginning is something we couldn't understand? What if if he explained it to us, we still wouldn't get it? What are you talking about? Oh, God. Okay. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me one second. I I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now, you all don't realize it took about 30 minutes. Why? Because I couldn't remember the scripture where it was located, so I had to find it. But then I had to put the words together, but I didn't think the two sections came together, so I was all over the place. But I'm finally here. It says in Ecclesiastes, that's right, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 11, he has made everything everything beautiful in its time. He has even put eternity into their hearts. Yet mankind will never find out the works of the true God, or excuse me, the works that the true God has made from start to finish. Doesn't matter if he lived for an eternity upon eternity, he will never be able to completely find out all of the things God has done, because remember, he has lived for eons. Okay, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to say? All the religions of the world teach about living forever someplace. Everybody wants to live. Nobody really wants to die, especially in the right conditions. Not even the people who commit suicide want to die. If they could get rid of whatever it was that was causing them the stress and the pain and the anguish, they would want to live forever. He has put eternity into their hearts. This is why I serve him. Now, we have one final one, and that was, I promise you to be the final one. And then uh, 16 minutes is where you guys can tell everybody to start watching the video. I'll even put it in the video title. Revelation 21.
Okay, 21. I told you before, this is why the God that I serve, he and I have a relationship. We're going to go to three and four. With that, I heard a loud voice from the throne say, look, the tent, remember, like a fine gauze of God is with mankind. And he'll reside with them. And they will be his people. Doesn't mean he's going to come down to earth. It means he will watch over them. Let's, let's prove it. And they will be his people. And God himself will be with them. In spirit? In spirit. He will wipe out every tear from their eyes. And death, death, death will be no more. No more dying? No more dying. Neither will mourning. Mourning? Oh, there won't be any more mourning. It'll just be nighttime out of... No, not that type of mourning. Means mourning over the fact that somebody has died or somebody is hurt or somebody something has happened bad and all that. No, no more of that. No outcry. What type of outcry? Don't cry out loud. Just keep it inside. Not that type of crying. Okay? No more pain. There'll be no more pain. Can you imagine a world without pain? Joy and pain. I'm sorry. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? Sunshine and rain. Anyway, the former things have passed away. Then the one seated on the throne said, look. <laughs> Take a look. I'm making all things new. Also, he says, write this down in your hearts for these words are faithful and true. It says write, W-R-I-T-E, not R-I-G-H-T. Write it down, people, because he's saying you can count on it, because he's never lied. Everybody else has lied. He ain't never lied. So at 17 minutes, we're going to start this video, and I'll put it in the title, 17 minutes, for those who don't want to hear what I just said, and that's on you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to explain to you how to acquire credits the legal way and when I explain this to you my hope is that you will get it I'm gonna pause you for just a second because I have to pull up some what I pulled up is something for all of you to see it's that season um, we just got over that all's hollow worshiping of the dead stupid day look if you are claiming that you serve the true God then there is no way in the world you would participate in Halloween that's worshiping of the dead. His son, Christ Jesus, said that he is the God of the living. He would never support that stupid holiday. You really have to do your research on that. You cannot do Google searches on the Bible. Please don't do that. <laughs> oh, God. Google, that algorithm is not designed to point you in the right direction. It's designed to point you in every other direction but the truth. So don't use Google to search about the Bible, people. Don't be so vulnerable and gullible. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is IRS Tax Topic 453. IRS Tax Topic 453. All you got to do is Google it and see what I'm seeing. Go over it about 10 times, literally 10 times. Go over this about 10 times. So that you'll understand it. If somebody owes you money and you can't collect, if they owe you, it didn't say if they owe you because you loaned them money. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna explain it. If they owe you money and you can't collect, you may have a bad debt. Now, for discussions on what constitutes a valid debt, go here. Okay. Let's go on. Generally, to deduct a bad debt, you must have previously loaned out, of your, loaned out your money. Hold on, hold on. Generally, that means that's not the only reason. Let's give you some other reasons. If you are an accrual method taxpayer, then you can take a bad debt deduction for unpaid salaries, wages, rents, rents. Wait a minute. Yeah, because we done told y'all. Y'all are not paying attention. Your promissory note, if you apply the act, put this in Google, 59 stat, 237. Hold on, we're going to do that, okay? Let me open this up, and then we're going to bring it right next to my IRS tax topic. I hope it doesn't create another page. 
Yeah, I knew it would do that. I didn't want it to do that. I just want it to be right here in the middle. Right there. Okay, watch this. 59. Stat. 237. Uh-oh, that says six. No, got to have fives. Let's see what we pull up, shall we? Now, I don't expect it to take us there because the staple singers, you know, they 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 not around no more. So I don't I don't I don't think it was gonna take us straight there. See how it didn't take us straight there? Federal digital system. There it is right there. 59 stat 237. This is Cornell Law. Uh we're gonna go there in a second, but I want to try to find it another way. Get you guys uh because I'll put the site out, but see, we had to pull up pictures of it. And that's why the document that we provided is pictures. A picture is worth 100 billion words? No. 1,000, 15, 5 quadzillion words? No. We're going to go here. Normally, I'd go to the federal digital system, but I'm going to go to Google. And guess what? It took me right back to the same page, so we are stuck. Then we're going to go here. If it will take us here, normally to say cannot be found. Problem detected. That's what it does. So that's the first thing you're going to go through when you look it up. So what do we do? We're going to go back to the Google search because we don't want the subscription pages. You don't want to get a subscription? Nope, don't want a subscription page. So we're going to go back to Google. Now follow me. Statutes and codes. USCode.gov. We want the statute part. Now. Follow here, 59, 5, 9, page number, Do Duranta Siete. Look at that, 237, 59 stat, and then, guess what? We go right here, any Federal Reserve Bank be making applications to the Federal Reserve, blah, 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 blah. Where's our next page? Well, we have to click on next to get to the next page, huh? 237. Oh, this is the next page. See right here? The said Board of Governors. So we need these two pages. So we go back previous. Now watch this. Copy. Copy image. No. Save image. No. What are we going to do? We're going to print. Print. How are we going to print this? It's an image. And then we're not going to use the printer. We're going to save as PDB F of this. This is what I should have done in the first place. We're going to save it as a PDF. Uh-oh. Print preview failed. Oh. Uh, it ain't letting me do it. It just said you can't do it this way. But I want to do it this way. Uh-oh. It's all grayed out. I got to do it again. Hold on. Let's see if it's going to let me do it. I like doing it this way. But it may not let me do it this way. Loading preview. Loading preview. Loading. Oh, there it is. Hooey. But see, that ain't supposed to be right here. See this right here? That ain't supposed to be. I need the full page. Let's see if it gives it to me, Lamb Escape of Me. No, nope, it ain't giving me the full page, so I can't do it this way. Lord has mercy. He, he certainly does. We can't do it that way. So let's do more options. More bounce to the ounce. Let's get rid of the header and the footer. See, it ain't got the footer. We need the whole page. So we can't do it this way, y'all. I saw we. I saw we. Let's do it this way. Let's see if that works. I saw we. It just won't let me do it. So no, 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 no. We're not doing it that way. Get out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, then you have to copy image. So we're going to save image as TikTok, 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 TikTok. And we're going to save image as, well, we could have, we could have did it a different way. I, I've got to wait for it to catch up because the system is waiting for me. Y'all wait. I'll be right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've already saved the first page. This is it right here. And now I need to put page two of two because it's two pages. So two of two, and that takes care of that. But you can also just click on Get Document. 
and I think this will say both of them. Now, I don't know because I say get, oh, no, it won't. It won't save it. You got to save it. You got to click on it. Sorry. You got to click on it and save image as. Okay. Now, by saving image as, let's go ahead and see what we got. TikTok, TikTok, be right back. Of y'all waiting. Now, what I'm doing is I'm selecting both items, making sure I click on the bottom one first because of the way I'm opening it. If my computer would just let me do it, and then I am going to show other options. Where are my options at? I got options. I got stocks. I got bonds. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you may not understand. See, one comes first, two comes second when I do it the way I did. And I have PDF Exchange that will allow me to open up the document. I have a meeting in two hours. I got a meeting in the man's room. I'll be back real soon. Uh oh, uh oh, oh. Somebody slapped that person because I was not in the mood. Uh oh, there's a problem, ladies and gentlemen. It got rid of all my previously opened documents. That's going to cause me some disturbances, sis, 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 sis. Do you see? Both documents are here. Okay. So this is, and so what do I do? I'm going to pay, 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 pay attention. I was going to save it. Okay. But I ain't just going to save it as anything. See, this saves as a PDF document, but I need to have all the, the stuff. So y'all will have to excuse me one second. Fifty nine stat two thirty seven section symbol numeral two open paren pages one and two. Close paren. The act of June 12, 1945. Voice recognition, ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? And there it is right there. And I will post this online. I was posting and I'm going to post it online and give you guys the link. This way you don't have to look for it. Okay, now let's get back to this so that you guys understand it. Ladies and gentlemen, if I, being any Federal Reserve Bank, make an application to the local Federal Reserve agent or take the application along with the promissory note and give it to whomever's demanding a payment of me and give them this section and give them instructions that they are to give it to the local Federal Reserve agent and document the fact that it's for a necessity. When it comes time for somebody trying to evict me out of my apartment, somebody trying to evict me out of my home, I can say, pay attention, that I pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. I can say that I tendered payment in accord with the law. Now, you may not understand how important Important, how important that is. So I'm about to show you how important that is. Would you mind if I show it to you? I would love you to show that to me. I don't think you can, but I'm, I'm going to sit up here and hope that you can. Okay, let's hope. Let's keep it alive, homeboy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you. Let me show you the way. Once tender has been received, for a car loan, the lender must. Okay, so
return the note as paid. This is just a page. Sorry, that was just a page that was going to show me <laughs> everything got taken care of. I don't want you. Get out of here. Rid of assistance. Um, I got to get back to the page I was just on. I don't remember which one of these I opened. So I'm going to open all of them. Got to be this one or there we go. And we hit enter. Contends that the import of the provisions above is that if the lender fails to return the original note as paid and provides a release of lien within 60 days of demand, it must forfeit all principal interest. Okay, let's see what the court concludes is. Construction appears to give rise to a drastic remedy, but Aquin construction appears to render the requirements virtually nullity, except that hopeful rare circumstances where the lender unscrupulously attempts to enforce a paid note resulting in recovery damages. So let's find out what they did in this case because I'm interested. Because they're dealing with people arguing. Shouldn't be arguing, ladies and gentlemen. Let's find out what the conclusion in this case was because I'm interested. They did a certified question. Give me a second. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking at the cameras. There was a car driving by, but I'm looking at the cameras and I just noticed that the sun is just now starting to come up and the clouds is blocking its view. Oh, they did a certified question to the Supreme Court of the state. I'm going to suggest y'all look at this case, okay? Look at that. The, the court certified a question to the... This is the Fifth Circuit Court. Wait, do y'all understand what this is? The Fifth Circuit Court certified a question to the Supreme Court of the state instead of them making a decision. This is probably a Rooker-Feldman issue. Okay? I really, really, really am going to tell you guys, only after the lender has failed to and shall fail to comply shall all principal and interest be forfeited by the lender as required by Section 50 of this article of the Texas Constitution in connection with the failure of the lender to comply with the obligations under the extension of credit. Ladies and gentlemen, ta-da! You're going to need to read this because this is the point. I'm going to let you know that this is what we're doing at the AMCF organization. We're going a whole lot further than the person who did this case. I got to go over this case. So what I do, the reason why I use case text, because we're going to do one column. And yeah, we're going to do this. And then we're going to ta -da! download it. Because this is exactly, exactly, exactly the point. So when we tell you we're going to follow the law, we're going to follow the law, but we're bringing up more than what they're bringing up. This individual did what they were supposed to do because it is a breach of contract. Okay, but there's, because it's a breach of contract, it's not a simple breach of contract. No, no, no. There are certain things that must be alleged, and that's what we do. All right. Aquins, it says... This problem is highlighted in Aquin's argument that the breach of the contract claim was properly dismissed for want of damages. As such, we cannot conclude that Aquin's interpretation is correct. On the other hand, given the fact that the release of lien was promptly filed, it seems somewhat extreme to order 
a forfeiture of all principal and interest here. Actually, no, that's not true. If Aquin failed to follow the law, then yes, they must suffer the consequences, especially if their failure was intentional. We turn then to the question of whether we should certify this issue to the Texas Supreme Court. Under the Texas Constitution, the Supreme Court and the Courts of Criminal Appeals have jurisdiction to answer questions of state law certified from the federal appellate court. And it may answer the question of law certified to it. If the certifying court is presented with determinative questions of Texas law having no controlling Supreme Court precedent, the Supreme Court may decline to answer the question certified to it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's because they're following a rule. This is the rules of appellate procedure. They did this for themselves. They also added it to their constitution. Who did that? Congress and the Supreme Court for the state. So, I apologize, y'all. Uh, I was on my system. I apologize. I was on my um, battery, and I'm running on batteries right now because it's 5.56 in the a.m., and we're still having to get some components for the solar system. So three batteries, I was running on one, and... That little beep, beep, beep that you heard, that was the, <laughs> you ain't using this battery no more. So now I'm charging up that battery with another battery. Okay, just uh, it's just what I wasn't paying attention to the clock. All right, because I've been up since 4 o'clock. And what I got to do is I got to connect back to the internet. So give me one second. You see, it only takes a minute, girl. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this case, and... What's going to happen is they're going to use technicalities because they can't allow this individual to just come in there and say, oh, no, uh-uh, y'all can't do that. Y'all y'all can't do that. He already won. While the courts are to interpret the Texas Constitution by relying heavily on its literal text, citations and internal quotation marks omitted, Aquin's reading of the statute may significantly diminish the draconian consequences of noncompliance by allowing the lender to simply ignore the actual import of these constitutional provisions. Uh-uh. Sorry. Can't do that. Sorry. Can't do that. Ah, uh, forced to sell of home, the homestead by forfeiture of all principal and interest. See? Draconian consequences, they call it draconian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not a draconian consequence. It is following the statute as written. Consequences for noncompliance, whether intentional or inadvertent, not merely the loss of the rights of forced sale of a homestead, but forfeiture of the principles and interests. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a case that was already decided two years before, but they wanted to get technical. I've never read this case, but just by doing this video, I'm able to show you the case. Go and read it. Don't pay so much attention to the court trying to come up with a way out. See, this is an appellate court for the entire circuit refusing to go by the Constitution. Okay? We find these cases inconclusive, and we note that Texas has ardently protected the homestead. Of course they protect homestead rights. That's why the code is in the Constitution in the first place. Whew! All right. So that's one case, ladies and gentlemen, one case. And notice, the tender has been received for a loan. The lender must relinquish the lien and return the note as paid. Now, that was just the first case. Do your research. After the creditor has returned the security interest to the borrower, the borrower must make tender of the funds given under the agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, the borrower has tendered the funds given under the agreement. The agreement was the application and the promissory note, which amounted to a tender. The tender was the collateral and security 
for the loan. Pay attention. The courts are not bringing up that section. The creditor's completion of its obligation, the borrower must tender properly it received the property it received from the creditor under the loan. Ladies and gentlemen, the borrower never receives property. The borrower never receives property from the creditor. The property always comes from a different party. You go and you buy a car from a dealership, the dealership is not giving you the money. The financing organization is giving you the money. They're never giving you the property. Your property is always coming from a third party, always. Look, sets forth the sequential scheme of rescission and tender whereby a creditor must return all money and property paid to the borrower and terminate the security interest within 20 days of receiving notice of rescission. Go and do your research, people. Go and do your research. Okay? Now, let's get back to debts. Ladies and gentlemen, if I work for a company and we agreed what my salary would be, and they are not paying me my salary, but we have an agreement, then I can write it off as a bad debt. I can deduct it on my taxes. I have that right. What if I am working for a company? Pay attention. Pay attention. I can't tell you to do this. I'm just telling you the way I think. Let's say I work for a company. And let's say I do accounting. And as I'm doing the accounting for the company, I do research and I find out that other accountants are being paid $200,000 more than what I'm being paid. Well, that's lost wages. That's unpaid salaries. And I have a right to comparable pay. Let's say I'm a woman. And every other woman in my field is being paid the same, but the men are being paid hundreds of thousand dollars more a year than we are. Say what? Then I can write that off. Wait, 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 wait. Let's say that the CEO of a company like Google makes $3 million a year. And I'm only making $50,000 a year as the CEO of my company. Do I write it off? Look, you're going to have to go over the publications to see if my technical and getting that technical applies. But unpaid salaries, unpaid wages, unpaid rents are written off as deductions, ladies and gentlemen. The fees you pay to go into court. Remember, you're not supposed to be paying anything. Tender your promissory notes. Now, wait, I got to show you something. When you get a chance, I need you to go to this page. Uh, well, I'll, I'll try to put the link for this page in there. I want you to understand the IRS has procedures. It says that if you send anything to their offices that has a financial institution's name on it that ain't a legitimate financial institution or a monetary instrument printed on check quality paper or photocopy paper or monetary interest referencing 31 USC 371, no bank routing number. All American checks have a nine-digit number surrounded by symbols. Okay, you can't use the routing number, so don't even try. A lien number, the word certified banker's check. All right, look, I want you to understand something. You do not see government remittance coupon here, do you? You do not see our style money order here, do you? For deposit, EFT only, for discharge of debt, comptroller warrant, not for deposit, for set off, adjustment, and discharge. Now, we did include this in our documents in the past. We don't do it anymore. Certified money certificate, comptroller warrant, says you can't do any of this, ladies and gentlemen. Bank or financial institution does not exist or it's gone out of business. Non-magnetic encoding because they put it through the Mickertone ink 
Yes, you can buy Mikertone ink. It's called magnetic ink. Mikertone ink is the name. Okay? Told you I've been doing this for a while. Site draft. Okay? That requires a service charge for processing. Non-negotiable remittance, such as lien drafts. Government remittance coupon. Okay, that's what ours is called. Certified banker's check. Public office money certificate. Certified document draft. Controller warrant certified money certificate. Personal checks drawn on a Federal Reserve Bank or a federal agency. The Federal Reserve Bank and federal agencies do not offer personal checking accounts. No, but they do offer private banking accounts. Say what? That's exactly what I said. A large majority of these bogus remittances are received as by certified or registered mail. They may be accompanied with the following documents. A letter requesting a refund for overpayment or for the taxpayer renouncing his or her U.S. citizenship. A document titled Warrant Processing Procedures has been attached to several of the bogus remittances. This is not a legal or valid document. Do not process a remittance because it is attached to a warrant, the warrant processing procedure. Go over this to know what to avoid, those of you who are doing remittances. Follow the procedure, but go over this, ladies and gentlemen so that you'll know. Avoid removing evidence, lifting fingerprints and palm prints, handling the remittance, envelope and any correspondence as little as possible. Place remittance in a check saver. If there is any doubt as to the legitimacy of a particular payment, immediately contact your manager or the fraud detection center, the local office of the TIGTA in your campus. Do not contact the taxpayer, payer, banking institution, remittance indicator on the remittance to ascertain the item is legitimate or not. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you know what's going on. See? Department of Justice criminal restitution program payments. Go over this. So, let's go to the top. This is the same thing that uh, talks about the bill of exchange. Okay, this tells you what they will and will not accept. This is how you get around their stupidity. Follow their rules, ladies and gentlemen. These are their internal rules for the Internal Revenue Service. I will provide that for you. Nobody else will. Okay, getting back to this, ladies and gentlemen. These are not my rules. I didn't create this document. But if you are doing everything as a sole proprietor, as a business, then anything directly related to your business or anything closely related to your business that the primary motive for incurring the debt is business related, you can deduct on your Schedule C form and other applicable business income tax return. These are examples, but this is not an extensive list. Every company out there gives discounts during this so-called Christmas season, but they don't call it a Christmas season. They call it a holiday season. Why? Because they've extended it for the entire fourth quarter. October through December is the fourth quarter. Go ahead. Look at TV. Notice all the sales. And Black Friday, they call it black, but ain't got nothing to do with nobody's blackness. Okay? That's a business loss. That's why they give you the discount so that they can write it off. That's how they make their money at the end of the year, by writing that junk off. That means they owe less taxes, which means they gain more income. That's how companies make it through the end of every single year. If it were not for practices like this, most companies would be bankrupt. Just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, we were discussing with the group yesterday if people only understood. We are not trying to 
shut down the entire system. We're not trying to prove the system is a fraud. No, we're not doing that on any level. What we are doing is highlighting one thing so that you all need to understand that there is no money. How do we prove there is no money? Ladies and gentlemen, because your promissory note is collateral and security for the loan. You're not receiving any money. Federal Reserve notes are not money. They're just pieces of paper. They're advancement notes. It tells you right here. Oh, did I? I oh, I'm, I, this is wrong. This is the wrong document. I'm sorry. The other document was open, but now it ain't open no more. So now I got to go to it. Uh, we, the Federal Reserve Act. That's what I got to open up. Where you at, Federal Reserve Act? Amazon lawsuit? No. Let's see. Where you at, Federal Reserve Act? Power of attorney, power of attorney substitution. Where are you at, Federal Reserve Act? Uh, Federal Reserve Act. There it is. Ooh, we thought I was going to miss it, huh? All right, we got to make this smaller because it's too big. All right, ladies and gentlemen, section number two. This is the a company with a tender section. This is section 16, Federal Reserve notes to be issued at the discretion of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System for the purpose of making advances. That's the only reason Federal Reserve notes are used for making advances to you and other Federal Reserve banks through the Federal Reserve agents, the local agents as here and after set forth and for no other purposes are hereby authorized. Now you see, are hereby authorized? I want y'all to pay attention. Pay attention, mama. He gonna show us something. Now, we gonna go here. We can go one, two, four, 11. So 12 USC 411. I want y'all to pay attention because Y'all may not understand it. We're going to prove to y'all that these codes are not law. How you going to prove that to us? You ain't proved nothing to us so far. Pay attention. Through the Federal Reserve agents, as here and after set forth, and for no other purpose, purpose are authorized. Pay attention. For no other purpose are authorized. Pay attention. For no other purpose are authorized. Federal Reserve agents set forth and for no other purpose are hereby authorized. Ladies and gentlemen, the statute does not match the original text of the law, which is why Title 12 is not positive law. This is not the law. Do not go by the code. Pay attention. This is not the law. Do not go by the code, go by the statute at large or the original act. See, you see how it puts 12 USC 411 here? By reference, that's why it's in brackets. Have somebody explain to you what do the brackets mean? Okay, have somebody explain to you what do the brackets mean this thing about application for notes the original act doesn't say that that's added Shh, don't tell nobody ladies and gentlemen let's get back to the point that you all need to know let's go back to the original act do you see it doesn't have that section in the original act, as I told you. It doesn't have this. That's why it's in brackets. It's not included in the original act. This is the amendment to the act. The second paragraph of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act, as amended, is amended to read as follows. Your application plus your note is tender collateral security. Start paying your bills, people. You're following the law. You will have in this video a copy of the act and a copy 
of that page for the IRS so that you can rebut their stupidity. We have people who are sitting in jail because they said they did something wrong. Correct the record, people, or make them adjust the act. But here's the thing. Even if they were to go back and change this act, it's too late because everything you've done up until that point is grandfathered. Yes, they can hate me if they want because I don't care. I've had enough. I've had enough of them pretending. Now, when you go to the Federal Reserve website, uh, we're going to go here. This is just so you guys can prove your point because many of you are not getting it. There is no debt. That's why you get to write that junk off. You've always got to write off your cost of living. Say what? What you mean? You better you better show me section 16. You better reach that site. Here it is right here, y'all. Issuance of Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes to be issued at the discretion of the Federal Reserve Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System for the purpose of making advances to the Federal Reserve Banks through the Federal Reserve agents as here and after set forth and for no other purpose are hereby authorized. This is taken from the actual act 48 stat 337. Hold on. And you know what? I have not pulled that stat up. So I'm going to have to pull this stat. Okay. Now, here's the other one. This is the one that we keep talking about. We're going to go to 1945, 4012. See, June 12, 1949, stat 237. 237. 59, stat. Come on now, all the way up here. 59, stat 237. So now you have your evidence. Remember, let's do this for you so that you guys can get it. We're going to put this in here first. Statute at large is evidence of what the law is, question mark. No, not looking for that. We're looking. No, don't care about that. The United States statute at large shall be legal evidence of law. Pay attention. It's not the law. It's just legal evidence of law. Okay? Legal evidence of law. It's not the law. It was never the law. Statute at large is evidence of what the law is. Okay, watch this. Let's do it this way. The U.S. Code is prima facie fascia fascia Ladies and gentlemen, it's prima facie, and I I pronounce it prima facie. Prima facie case is established. No, I said the U.S. Code, the United States Code, prima facie evidence, not of law, just evidence. The code is just evidence. It's not law. So whenever somebody brings a violation of the code, you must challenge the code as not being law. Mr. Weisner examines the history of the U.S. Code, explaining why it is only prima facie evidence of the law and discusses efforts of blah, 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 blah. Wait a minute. SATCOM? 
SATCOM 911! Lord have mercy! The document is on SATCOM 911.com! How'd it get there? Let's go see! Ladies and gentlemen, there are so many documents on SATCOM that I cannot begin to tell you what's on there. I, I promise you, I wasn't expecting this. Okay? We no longer read the statutes. Not in the sense of Frankfurter did. Frankfurter actually did read the actual statutes. He did not read the United States Code. He read the statute at large. He jointly described himself as one for whom the statute at large constituted his staple reading. Frankfurter, in other words, did not read imitation law. He read the real law. So did everyone else in Frankfurter's day. Nowadays, we don't. Read, read, imitation law. What's the footnote? Tobias D. Dorsey, some reflection on not reading the statute. Really? While he was expressing his own views and not those of his employer, readers might want to know that Mr. Dorsey's assistant counsel of the Office of Legislative Counsel, oh, that he was an assistant counsel for the Office of Legislative Council for the House of Representatives. Snap! Say it ain't so! Ladies and gentlemen, I would get a reading of this. I didn't read this to understand that the statute at large is evidence of what the law is, but it is not law. Pay attention. Statute at large is only evidence of what the law is. It is not the law. The United States Code is only prima facie evidence, but it is not the law. Then what's the law? The Constitution of the United States of America? The common law that was in existence prior to the Constitution of the United States of America? The Northwest Ordinance? According to the law, that's the law. Kind of simple, ain't it? Do yourself a favor. Go read. Now, I'm not going to put this link in there because I'm putting too many links in there. But that's the first thing I want to show you. The second thing is this act right here. I don't want Encyclopedia Brown. What I want is the actual publication. So this one says it's going to take me directly to this right here. I'd rather get, I'd rather go here. You guys don't mind? I'd rather go here and see if I can pull it up here. Yeah, I kind of figured it would do that because that's what it has been doing. But let's try here. Let's try the top one. Same thing. All right. I'm not going to go to the other site, the one that uh, we got right here. I'm not going to go here, but let's do that as well. I got to go back here. Give me a second, y'all. Not there. Not there. Not there. But here. 48 stat 337. Had to remember it, okay? So we do 48. I don't even know why I'm getting rid of the whole thing when I just got to replace the three. Okay, 73rd Congress, which is the correct Congress, 48 stat 337. Okay, where's my 48 stat at? Uh, relating to contracts and agreements under the Agricultural Adjustment Act, be it entitled, blah, blah, blah. Uh, sections 114 and 115 of the Criminal Code of the United States shall not apply to any contracts or agreement here and after or heretofore entered into under the Agricultural Act, blah, blah, blah. Uh, approval, the act, all rights and titles, interest, and every claim of the Federal Reserve Board of every Federal Reserve Bank and every, I think y'all might want to read this. Upon approval of this act, all rights, titles, interest, and every claim of the Federal Reserve Board of every Federal Reserve Bank that includes you and of every Federal Reserve agent in and to any and all gold coin gold bullion shall pass to and are hereby vested in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, all of your gold, all of your bullion, all of your coins, 
are now vested in the United States. The United States has assumed responsibility for your notes. And in payment, therefore, credits in the equivalent amount in dollars are hereby established in the treasury in the accounts authorized under the 16th paragraph of the Federal Reserve Act and heretofore and by this act amends. Yes, you have an account with the treasury. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I'm not joking right now. Now we can prove you have an account with the treasury. We've already proved you're a Federal Reserve Bank. And so now we prove that you have an account with the Treasury and that it was established in 1933. Now shut your mouth. Yes. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, of course we are going to download this junk. Of course. Let me save this page. Lord have mercy. Save image. Ah, yes. 48 stat 337. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. This is called the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. Download a copy of that act, y'all. The Gold Reserve Act of 1934. Hold on. Cuarente ocho. And get rid of that. Put my three there. And we're not going to put a subsection or do we put a subsection? I got to see what the subsection is. I don't think there is a subsection. So give me a second. The Gold Reserve Act of 1934. The collateral security thus offered shall be notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and acceptance as acquired under the provisions of Section 13 of this Act, or bills of exchange endorsed by a member bank of any Federal Reserve. This is that section, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the amendment we were looking at. Every Federal Reserve bank shall maintain reserves of gold certificates or lawful money of not less than 35 percentum against the deposits and reserves of gold, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Federal Reserve Act, otherwise known as the Gold Reserve Act of 1934. So let's pull up that Gold Reserve Act of 1934. V.PDF. I don't know why I never paid attention to it, because I wasn't really interested. That's the reason why. I ain't even got to understand why. I just know that's the reason why. I'm looking for just a straight PDF. I don't want to be jumping through links and all of that stuff. Let's do this right here. No, that's 1968. Uh, Section 6 of the Gold Reserve Act is amended by striking out the second paragraph, the Reserve of the United States. Let's do this. This is an amendment, so I'm going to definitely take this amendment. Okay. Now, mind you, 50, no, this says 82 stat, so I don't know. I'm going to have to look at it a little bit deeper. Let's pull it up. Okay, so what's the actual stat here? See, 59 stat 237, gold reserve requirement elimination. See, remember, you're supposed to have gold reserves? Well, they eliminate that requirement. So 59 stat 237, the very same one we've been highlighting. No longer do you need a gold reserve. The part of the third paragraph of Section 16 of the Federal Reserve Act. Now, that's uh, 413. So let's see if they have a... Nope, they don't have 412. Or... Nope. You have 416. And you have 414, but not 412 being amended by this act. Let's see, what else we got here? What else we got here? 
Nope, I, they, they just they, they ain't no amendments to anything. I'll read this later, but I ain't reading it now because I got things to do. 82 stat 51. So we have 82 stat 51, 82 stat 50, and 51. So 82 stat 51 would be this right here, 51, page 51 and 50. So 82 stat 50, 82 stat 50. Okay, 82 stat 50. So we're going to definitely download this. See, 82, page 50. Statute at large, 82 stat 50. Tick tock. All right. Let's do it this way. 82 statute, and then we do 50. We do it this way because it's easier. And let's get, just make it stat. That way it'll be easier for me to go back to and remember it. Like I said, I never thought to look at it, didn't care, because it came after March 9, 1933. But now you see, we need it. Okay, give me one more again, one more again. So y'all hold on. See, 1931 to 1999, this is the morons. So this is the actual act right here. And do you see? Do you see these people right here? I don't know who he is. He looks like father's times, great, 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 great grandnephew, okay, and this moron right here caused so much damage by letting him, them put him in office, shame on them, they called it his gold program, ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't the gold program, financial institutions from redeeming dollars for gold, Interesting, ain't it? The act transferred all ownership of all monetary gold of the United States to the Treasury and prohibited the Treasury and financial institutions from redeeming them in gold. They had to give you just compensation. They had to give you just compensation. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not expect this particular video to take this... <coughs> Excuse me, had to cough take this turn. I'm very grateful that it did take this turn because it gave me more ammunition. So let me go ahead and take you back where we were headed. I have a problem. I have a company like Amazon, but I'm doing something different with Amazon. But let's say I have a problem with a company like, like Amazon. We have an agreement. We have a legitimate agreement, but I, when they gave me a notice of change in terms and conditions, you know how they always give you that stuff? Well, I opted out of the agreement within the time frame they gave for op opting out of the agreement. Because if you read the terms and conditions, when they give you the notice of change in terms and conditions, yes, I read that junk, it gives you an opt-out period. So I always opt out before the period expires. And when I opt out of that agreement, they have this little clause saying, well, if you choose not to be a part of this agreement, then you can cancel your account. You may cancel your account. Well, I choose not to cancel my account. I choose to counteroffer. So let's say my counteroffer includes an arbitration agreement. Well, if my counteroffer, ladies and gentlemen, includes an arbitration agreement, and they don't respond, and they don't opt out of my contract within the time frame, Oh, Penny Mac has learned this lesson. Oh, God. Penny Mac has learned this lesson, y'all. Penny Mac is now opting out of the performance contracts. But it's too late because they've opted into too many. You can take the new opt-out junk that they send people now, documenting the fact that they knew what their obligations were. Anyway, and they don't opt out in time. So I don't do 
the arbitration myself. Even though my contracts allow me to do the arbitrations myself, I have a third party like SITCOM Arbitration Association do the arbitrations. Why? Because it is a third party. It doesn't matter if the courts say that the other party wasn't served and all that junk that they try to say. The court doesn't get to determine whether or not a party was served. The evidence determines whether or not a party was served. Shh, don't tell nobody. And once documentation is on the record that the party was served and that they forfeited, again, I don't need to go to court. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. To show that the debt is worthless, you must establish that you've taken reasonable steps to collect the debt. It is not necessary to go to court! If you can show that the courts are biased and they are not going to sit up there and do the right thing, you don't have to go to court. If you don't go to court, you may take the deduction only in the year the debt becomes worthless. Yes, you may take the deduction only in a year it becomes worthless, but let's say the debt became worthless in 2019 it's now 2022 then what does it become at that point ladies and gentlemen a deduction can only be taken in a year the debt becomes worthless so if it's a year subsequent to that then it becomes a credit because it's carried forward okay watch this How to carry forward a tax deduction on a bad debt. Bad debt Ladies and gentlemen, I've never looked this up before, but how to carry forward a bad debt tax deduction. Now, this is going to do for Canada because I'm out of Canada right now. See? Ha ha! And let's see. See? How to claim losses with bad debts and bankruptcy. This is for Canada. So, we're going to have to put USA. You mama, emma, a mama. How to write off bad business debt. Now, this again is IRS tax topic 453. Can you carry tax deductions forward? A tax carry forward, sometimes written as a carry forward, is a legitimate way to carry over deductions to the next tax year. It becomes a credit. It is no longer a deduction. And the future tax years, certain allowed deductions and tax losses that cannot be claimed in the current year. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, as you see, you can carry forward a bad debt to a next year or several years and carry forwards are credits, i.e. tax credits. There is no money until you all start understanding the law that there is no money. Your promissory notes are the security for the Federal Reserve notes. That was the intent of Congress. How do we know? Hold on. Let's see if the New Deal is here. Where is it at? New. Wait, there it is. I think I saw it. The New Deal. Got the color back, y'all. Woo-wee. Uh-oh. I did have the color back. The color is... The color has gone. The color has gone away. Give me one second. Let me get the color. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got our color back. We have provided that any direct obligation to the United States or any notes, any notes, any notes, drafts, bills of exchange, any, is a negative determiner. Any notes is general promissory notes bond notes sticky notes anyway drafts bills of exchange or bankers acceptances acquired by federal reserve banks may be deposited with the treasury of the united states or with the local federal reserve agent 
and upon these security Federal Reserve bank notes, now Federal Reserve notes as amended, may be issued by the June 12th Act, 1945. In the case of deposits of obligations, contractual obligations of the government, the issuance of Federal Reserve notes may be for the entire amount of such securities. Wait, hold on. Collateral in the amount equal to the sum of Federal Reserve note that's applied for entire amount of such securities. Hold on, we ain't finished. I don't know what y'all were thinking. So let's go here. I like this part right here. It would appear that the amount of bank notes or Federal Reserve notes now that might be issued by the Federal Reserve System is not limited. That will depend entirely upon the amount of collateral that is presented that from time to time in exchange for Federal Reserve notes. Is this not correct? Yes, I think that is correct. Entire amount. Hold on now. We, 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 we got a lot of highlights on this thing. Hold on. Got to go to this page right here. Right here. Under the new law, the Federal Reserve Act, as amended, the money, Federal Reserve notes, are issued to the bank in return for your government obligations, bill of exchange, draft notes, trade acceptances, and bankers' acceptances. The Federal Reserve notes will be worth 100 cents on a dollar because it is backed by your instruments, which is the credit given to you for turning in your gold. It will represent a mortgage on all the homes and other property of all the people of the nation. Why? Because that's the property, the commodities that the people are trading, which was on the Treasury website when it spoke of those reserve notes. Y'all need to pay attention and follow the act as written. Okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, after I go and I get my arbitration award, I wait 10 days. Now, from the first 10 days after getting the arbitration award, I wait another 90 days. Well, technically, 90 days plus 10 days from when the award is issued. Because SAA sends out the notifications within that very same week of the award being issued. So all you have to do is wait 90 days plus 10, a total of 100 days, once you wait past 100 days, no one can challenge that, not even the court. So if you've ever got an award on an arbitration and 100 days went by before someone filed an objection, a motion to vacate, or anything else, it's invalid because the law only gives them 90 days to challenge the award. That's the first thing. Second, all you got to do is go read the act. Not the code, but the actual act. Remember, the code is not law. If they sought a motion to vacate in a district other than the district wherein the award was issued, they lose. They don't have the right. It can only be in the district in and for the district where the award was issued. By the arbitrator, if it was done in any other district, then the order is void. Look up what a void judgment is. You don't need to go to a court to determine a judgment is void. It's void on its face if they did not follow the act as written. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a bad debt. You have to include a statement. The statement must contain a description of the debt including the amount and the date it became due, the name of the debtor, and any business or family relationship between you and the debtor, and efforts you made to collect the debt, and why you decided the debt was worthless. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. It's not that difficult. And now you can do as the young lady did. Take it to your tax agent, and you don't have to show them all of that proof. You just have to document that it was a worthless debt. You can provide the accountant a statement and let them see this where it goes on Schedule C and do it as a business. Profits and loss for businesses as sole proprietors. Do it on your Schedule C as a sole proprietor. It's a business bad debt. 
Do not do it as a personal bad debt. And get your credits. Look. Scour the internet. Scour Google. You'll see that nobody's talking about this. Only one person. Why is that? Why is it that they don't want you to know that you have the right to write off everything? Your cost of living? Your cost of living. Remember, you cannot be taxed on your cost of living. Your property. Taxes. Your mortgage payments. Your rent. How long have you been living in that house and how many payments have you made annually? Remember, if you tendered a promissory note of any kind, anything that says that you promise to pay, i.e. a lease, then you don't owe anything, people. That was a promise to pay and you gave them that promise to pay along with an application. It's their job, not yours, to take it to the local reserve agent. You tendered it. Let them do their job. You've done your job. Now write it off. Follow the act that's written. Follow what they tell you you need to follow. Stop, people. Stop trying to, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. I've just shown you everything. Go over this information. Again, nobody else is talking about this stuff, but they should be. You should be examining this. Everything we've discussed here, you should be going over. Every document we discussed here, you should be going over. Most of the links here I will put underneath the video. All you have to do is, like I do, you see all of these uh, folders that are open? Just open the links. You don't have to go to them now. Just save them like I do. All of these links are saved. So I will send these links. Well, not the 411. What's the 411? Okay? You don't need this. You already have this. You can go to that anytime. You don't need this. You already have this because I'm going to send you that link. And this act right here, I'll send you this link so that you can look up this act because this is a direct quotation. These sections right here. Okay? But then pull up the PDF. The paragraph in exchange for stabilization fund reflects the author's correspondence on this issue with Michael Brando, Brando who is a professor of economics and director. Look, you already saw us do the video. See? Gold, banks, and a new deal. That's all this was a part of, was the new deal. Okay, the new deal was... Y'all ain't got to use no more gold. We're going to let y'all paper be the gold. So once you understand that, but I'll put the links underneath the video so that you will have some place to go so that you can follow the research. I'll even put that case that we talked about earlier. I'll put the case text information underneath the video. It's going to be a lot of links, but, you know, hot links. But here you go. So I have to go because I have to get ready for a meeting in an hour that I'm having with the staff of SATCOM and AMCF and so forth. So y'all take care. I hope, I really do hope you appreciate this information. Some of you who I know know what you're doing will appreciate it. And gotta go, y'all. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go.